Hello friends, this is lesson 22nd and here we are going to talk about machine learning essentials and these are the topics we are going to cover. So first we will be talking about how to build a generalized model, then uh, model prediction errors and then we will talk about overfitting and underfitting and we will provide some examples for them. Let's start with the first topic. So the first topic is how to build a generalized model. So building a generalized model means we have to consider the performance of our model. So what do you mean by performance of the model? Performance of the model means how accurate the model predicts and generalizes on an independent test data sets. So here from this definition you can easily understand that two things are there. First, how accurate the model predicts. This is the first point. And the second point is how the model generalizes when we are applying independent test data sets. So whenever we are modeling or whenever we are uh, training the model, after training the model goes for testing or we can say validation. So there we will be applying different data sets from the, from the same population, we will, we will be creating different samples and these test samples will be applied on the model and we will be seeing the performance of the model. The highest performance is recommended. Now here we have to think of how to reduce the number of errors if the model has errors. So how to reduce and how to improve the accuracy of the model. So these are the things that we are going to consider why we are building a generalized model. For example, see friends here, uh, let's say we want to predict the number of people infected by coronavirus in our neighborhood by asking the people or if possible we will be going and collecting the data from the hospitals. So now the question is, can we apply this prediction to the entire state or you can say the country or and then at the national level? Is it possible? Just by collecting some samples from your locality or neighborhood and based on that you, you build a model and now through that model can you predict the entire state? or country or at the national level? So the answer is no. Why? Because the prediction might change if we go to different states, countries or, or we can say at national level if you are applying because the model have not, the models have not seen some other data. The model complexity is not still tested because we have only applied some basic data types or least number of data types. So based on that we cannot predict the whole uh, population. So we have to test and train multiple times and then we can build a generalized model. Now here the second thing is here the second topic model prediction errors. These are the things we have to uh, think about the model we have to consider the errors here so two types of errors we have due to bias we have errors and the second type we have the variance so now let's see what is bias first so in supervised machine learning we talked about if you remember m a e it means mean absolute error if you remember otherwise you have to refer the previous lectures so which is actually caused due to bias so this error there we talked mean absolute error it is nothing but the error which is caused by bias so now let's see what is this bias because this is something that is causing this error now, bias is nothing but it is the difference between the actual values and the predicted values. And this we discussed if you remember in last lectures. So you go there, there we talked in details about this type of errors. So this is nothing but the difference between the actual values and the predicted values. So how the model predicts 
and how it differs from the actual values the difference so that difference is nothing but the bias how far in general our model predictions are from the correct values so this is called bias now let's see an example is here in simple uh, if you remember in simple linear regression so this is the equation if x is equal to b naught plus b1 x if you remember this so if x is equal to y and y if you remember it is dependent variable and x is called independent variable and now let's talk about the bias bias is equal to we have to first find the mean of true values then from that we have to subtract the mean of the predicted values for example if actual values actual or true values they are both the same so if actual value is equal to the mean is equal to 12 and the predicted value mean is equal to 10 now we have to take the difference between these two so the difference is nothing but 2 this is called the bias i hope you understood this now let's see if a machine learning model tends to be very accurate in its prediction maybe it is regression or classification then it is considered a low bias model this you have to remember if it is accurate we call the model as an accurate model it means the performance is good so that model is nothing but a model with low bias now let's talk about the second type of error which is called the variance so what is this variance variance is also a type of error which is caused due to okay independent on variability of models prediction for different unseen data so after the model is trained what we are doing we will be applying different unseen data to the model so then we will be checking the variability of the model how the model varies from one data set to another data set or from one sample sample we can say to another sample we will, we will be applying different samples from the same population to the model then we will be checking the variability of the model how the model varies for different samples from the same population so if the model has higher variance it means more variability so that is called okay higher variance or uh, model so how here actually how scattered are the predicted values from the true values this is called variance of the model so how the data points are spread out from the predicted values or uh, sorry predicted values from the true values so that is called variance now by applying different sample sizes from the same population to the model what happens here if the model does not change much between the samples so what do you call the model is called as low variance model as i said before here if the model changes drastically between the samples from the same population what will happen that model is called as high variance model now as a data scientist what is our job what do we have to do there so bias variance trade-off it means it is our job as a di as a data scientist to minimize test errors we have to minimize the number of bias errors and the number of variance errors we have to minimize these errors as a data scientist to find and we have to keep a balance between them so we have bias and we have variance so there should be a balance between these two so the model may have both maybe one is more than another or uh, the second one is greater than the first one so we have to keep a balance between these two types of errors now let's see here the third topic is again related to the two types of errors was what we discussed here so two extreme cases of the model fit so first type is called overfitting and then we have underfitting so what do you mean by overfitting so producing a model that performs well on the data you train but but that generalizes poor to any new data so if this is the case the model is called overfitted model what do you mean by this so the model means 
if we have trained the model and the model has memorized all the data points and then the model cannot generalize the unseen data so that type of model is called overfitted model it means models that are low bias and high variance so it means between these two errors there is a relationship and through this two things we can check whether the model is overfitted or it is underfit so very simple so see here producing a model that performs well on data you train so on that it is good the accuracy is more than uh, the model performance is good but whenever we are applying unseen data or some other samples so there we may have much variance between the samples so this type of uh, model is called overfitted so models that are low bias and high variance are prone to overfitted now how to avoid or how to prevent this type of uh, problem like overfitting so for that what we have to do use fewer features we have to reduce the number of features because if the number of features uh, features are more so the model is nothing but it is overfitted using fewer features can decrease our variance and prevent what overfitting fit on more training samples so if the training because here we see the model shows good performance on training data so what we have to do we have to increase the size of training data so the model then can generalize better than the previous which has less number of training data we have to increase the training samples then it will be better now here using more training data points in our cross validation can reduce the effect of overfitting and improve our high variance estimate now let's talk about the second thing here what is called underfitting so what is underfitting it is opposite of overfitting it means producing a model that does not perform well even on the training data so this is a model which cannot perform better on training data as well so how about unseen data so although typically when this happens you decide your model isn't good so it cannot even do better on training data so then this is called a poor model so we have to change the model or we have to think about uh, how to build it better enough and good looking for a better one so we have to change it models that are high bias and low variance are prone to underfitting so if it has high bias and low variance so that is called underfitting as i told you these are the two types of errors we have to keep some balance in between if there is no balance if it means we have high bias and low variance then the model is called overfitted model if we have high variance and low bias then that is called overfitted model so again here how to avoid underfitting so the same what we have to do use more features we have to increase the number of uh, it means we have to increase the complexity of model we have to add some more features so by adding the features the model will be predicting well then then uh, try more complicated model as i said here we have to change the model it means we can change and we can take some other model and then fit the data there and then check it and now we'll talk and give some examples for them i hope you understood this much theory now let's see here uh, in model essentials uh, sorry uh, uh, machine learning essentials first we talk about the bias and we said bias is nothing but the difference between the actual and predicted values so here then we have the variance what is the variance as we see uh, so the variance uh, due to independent uh, sorry an error which is caused uh, whenever we are applying uh, the the model unseen data so the variability is called the variance now we see here through this uh, figures you can better understand instead of, instead of um, the definitions now we see here so you consider this uh, red circle as a 
target and these are our data points and now let's see here if we have low bias and low variance so it means here our predicted values are so much close to the target values so this is the case we have to think about the model this is the base case this one and now what happens here if we have high bias and low values so the target is here so the predicted values are so much far from the target values so although it has low variance it means the data points are not scattered they are collected here but they are far from the target now if we have high variance and low bias means this one so see here it is still near to the target but the values are so much scattered because it is high variance there is sparsity in the data but think about this one this is the worst case it means if we have the high bias and we have the highest uh, sorry variance and highest bias so see the data points are far from the target and also they are what they are scattered so this is the worst case now as i said before there is a close relationship between these two it means the bias and the variance see this one it is showing us the model complexity here how to calculate the errors here and how to check whether the the model is overfitted or it is underfitted and that is using this uh, model you can easily understand see friends here this red line is indicating our bias so if the bias is high here what happens it means the bias is more than the variance then the model is underfitted so by decreasing the number of errors means the bias if you are in decreasing the bias so the bias will be coming to the zero point we are reducing the number of biases so in the opposite case what happens the the variance is increasing so this uh, blue line is nothing but the variance if you're decreasing the bias what happens the variance is increasing so as a data scientist as we talked before we have to keep some balance in between so this is called optimal model complexity so this is the point we have to think it means we have to keep some balance between these two otherwise if you are decreasing the bias what happens the variance is increasing if you are increasing sorry decreasing the variance what happens the bias is increasing so the model either may be underfitting or it may be in the in the overfitting so this is called total error and that total error will be calculated through this formula so this is called the optimal solution so we have to consider this one because this is the average of the both otherwise if one is increasing the other one is decreasing so here we have we talked about the bias and then we talk about the variance and here we have irreducible error this irreducible error is nothing but the error belongs to the model itself some nice it is always there this cannot be reduced because every model has some nice and some error uh, so that is there that we cannot neglect it is there in the model now let's have some examples here friends comparing the brain weight and body weight of mammals now imagine imagine that we are considering a relationship between the brain weight of mammals and their corresponding body weight a hypothesis might read that there is a positive correlation between the two means one goes up the other goes also but how strong is this relationship now let me read the data so this one thing you have to remember friends the data sets whatever i have used in my previous lectures and this lectures they are all publicly available you can download they are all free of cost you can download here this is the mammal data set i am reading it from the uh, same directory so here this is uh, okay it has three features here one is called the id brain of the mammal and this is the body so you see the values are in degradation because they are all quantitative values now if we check the size of this 
how many rows are there how many columns are there then we'll check it here how many rows are there we have 62 rows and three columns id brain and body now by filtering the data because i want to take a subset of this so i only consider the body weight of uh, mammals lesser than 200 so if i apply this filter the the number of rows are reduced to 51 and we have three columns now let us show this relationship through this uh, plot or graph so here from this plot you can easily understand that there is a there is a relationship and the relationship is positive as as it was mentioned here the relationship is positive here we said it is positive yeah it is uh, we have a positive correlation between these two here this is the regression line and these are the data points as the body weight is increased here the the brain weight is also increased you see here as one is increasing the second one is also increasing so it means there is a positive relationship between these two data points now here you can easily see that there is some bias because the data points are somehow far from the regression line see this data point and this is a regression line and here this one this one only some few points are there that they are attached with the regression line okay now let's see again i am reading but this time what i am taking i am taking two samples i am randomly classifying the same data set into two samples so these are the functions as we discussed friends um, and whenever we were talking about random variables those things so you refer that so between 1 and 3 so we will we have two numbers one is 1 and another one is 2 so what I am doing the, the whole data set randomly I am splitting or I am dividing it between 1 and to randomly it is not based on some relationship it is just randomly we are assigning the whole data set into two samples so now say one we have some numbers then two two again so we have two classes now it it is now it is converted to something like uh, uh, okay we can say classification or we can say that uh, the response value is nothing but it is discrete values because we have only one into one into the or repeated now it is converted to okay discrete responses if we think this is the response understand so randomly these values are assigned they are not based on some relationship now let us take the the mean of these two sample uh, sorry these two values and they are grouped by the sample okay now we, we can see we have two samples sample one and sample two and this is the mean for the brain and this is the mean for the body for the first sample this is the mean for the brain and this is the mean for the body for the second sample so we have two samples it means from the same data sets we created two samples randomly they are selected now let us see the relationship between these two samples now the plots this is the plot for the first sample and this is the plot for the second sample you can easily compare these two and you can say that there is not much difference between these two samples so it means the variance is low because whenever we are applying different samples if you remember here the definition of variance it means error due to variance is dependent on the reliability of model prediction for different unseen data so we are applying two samples randomly for the same model so here the regulation line if you are comparing they are not that much different so we say the model is low variance what if we increase our model complexity and allow to learn more by varying the order of the polynomial equation now we are increasing or for example we are increasing the number of features so what will happen to the model so here is the general formula or the equation of polynomial so we have f of x is equal to c naught plus c1 x plus c2 x square like that it is going c n x n so this n is nothing but the order of our polynomial now if it is equal to zero so we will be having uh, 
we will be having friends here a line horizontal to the x-axis because the order is zero we will be having a constant value for y so only we will be having a straight line horizontal to the x-axis but if n is equal to one so what will happen we will be having only this part friends and if you remember this is the equation of simple linear regression i hope you understood that so we will be having a line like this so what will happen now i want to i want the model to cover all these points because there are some variations sorry there is some difference or we can say there is the points are far from the regression line but i want the regression line to come like this it has to come like this it takes these two values then it has to go like that and it has to cover all these points but if this is the case no then the, the then it, it it should not be like a straight line or it cannot be you know, like uh, this one uh, a line like a regression line the line will be changed to something called parabola it means if you are increasing the number of orders so we may not have like this a regression line because it may change to a parabola so that is we have to apply here now i want to change the order of my model here the order of polynomial regression now if i change the order to four what will happen let's see here the output now i change so so now it is not a regression line a straight line this time the line is covering the data points now you can easily say that the variance is sorry the the bias is reduced because it is covering all these data points somehow see here all these points are covered so the variance is uh, sorry the bias is reduced let me change this to for example six further we'll see now you see it is still covered all the data points here let me change it to eight now the bias will be reduced to zero now we don't have any bias the bias is reduced to zero because we change the order to eight now the polynomial equation is uh, it happens like this now this is the first sample and this is the second sample and they are both applied to the same model but the variance is so much friends see this is the variance the output for the first model as here you're seeing it is reduced the variance uh, sorry the bias is reduced 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 it is coming to zero but here what happens here in this uh, sample the bias is reduced to zero but what happens here the variance is increasing as we see it here whenever one is reducing the other one is increasing we reduce the bias to zero but what happened here the variance changed to the maximum value so as a data scientist what we have to do see for the two distinct samples from the same population what happened the quadratic polynomial looks vastly different you see here the variance the variance is increased so much this is a sign of high variance the model is low bias because it matches our data bit. It, it it is matching or covering all the data points but what happens the variance is increased so much now here this is our job to keep a balance between these two so how to do that i will be changing the order i am not increasing the order i will reduce it to two now the order was eight here it covers all the data points but the variance increased so much now i change it to two and now let's see how the model look looks like so here somehow we keep the balance so both the regression lines if you're seeing here the parabola they are somehow similar and also the bias is reduced because here somehow they are reduced and they are covering the data points here also and also the uh, the, the 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 variance of both the samples if you're seeing they are somehow similar to each other now the plot seems to have good balance between what variance and bias 
And the other two cases what we talked about, if you remember friends, we talked about overfitting and underfitting. And we said overfitting is the result of model trying too hard to fit into training safe, resulting low bias or lower bias but much higher variance. Now see here this plot. You can see the first this red line. So these are the data points. We have around 10 or 11 data points over there. So the red line covers each and every data point like that. Each and every data point. It means the model memorizes everything. If the same data point if you apply for the model, so it will be giving you the highest accuracy because it is covering each and every data point. It is already memorizing these things. So what happens here? You see it has lower bias because we don't have any bias in between. It is covering each and every point, but it has lower, sorry, higher variance. If you are applying another sample from the same population, then what happens? It cannot cover those data points because it has already memorized only these things. So it cannot cover those data points. This you have to remember. Now the second thing here, the model that that are high bias and low variance so that is called underfitting you consider this blue line horizontal to x axis so this is called overfitted no, sorry underfitted because here what we have we have high bias and low variance if you are applying the second data type still it will be here the third sample if you are applying the same every any kind of samples if you are applying so this is the model so variation is low but it is high bias now let me tell you here the horizontal line here degree zero it means this one this blue line best fit constant polynomial which underfits the training data here underfits now here the parabola degree nine it covers each and every data point what happens here it is training data but it is very severely overfitting because if you are applying the another sample from the same data type so we will be having very low accuracy of the model because the model has already memorized these things if any data points if you are applying so it may not be covered by the model so here the best one which one is the best one this one with the green line because here we consider the balance between these two. So this strikes a nice balance between okay high variance and low variance and I hope you understood all these things friends. There is a close relationship between these two types of errors. We have bias and variance and they are nothing but the essentials of our uh, machine learning. If you consider these things then you can create a good model and a model which performs well with highest accuracy so we covered these things and we give the examples for them i hope you understood all these things